How do you say happy birthday? How do you sing the happy birthday song in India? I am the foggiest idea. Acha. Our stupid reactions. Tune in for the. <laughs> hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions again. It's Corbin. Rick. And you can follow us on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, from all juicy content. Twitter. It's so juicy. Thank you for watching Patreon. Follow us on Patreon, Twitter account. Ring the bell. We have a notification squad. Bang. Boom. There you go. Bang. Boom. And there it is. Today is the... What is today, Rick? Today is the 100th birthday of Satya Rai. Happy birthday, Satya Rai. You. Indeed. Beautiful, brilliant man. Uh, so, in honor of him, we watched a, another one of his films. So, our... Fourth, technically, but if you don't count True. up the Apu trilogy as a whole, uh, uh, actually our, our, our fifth because we can include two, the short oh, yeah. film, yeah, as sure. one of his works. So this would actually be our fifth <laughs> of his we're creations. We're basically experts. So no yeah. big deal. Also, uh, right. so we reviewed Chalulata. Chalul, Chalulata. <laughs> how do you how do you say? Yeah, if you're if you're speaking it from a Hindi background, it would be charulata. If you're speaking it with a Bengali background, it would be charulota. Charulota. Ah. Charulota. Sorry. Um, anyways, <laughs> uh, but obviously directed by Sachin Rai in 1964, uh, written, but it's an adapted screenplay from a original story. Correct. 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 Uh, yeah, from a from a novella. And he composed it. Correct. Dang. He went all Vishal Bardwaj on us. He's a man of many talents. Uh, yep. But it's uh, starring uh, a bunch of G's, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, Bengalis. Yeah. <laughs> do, you just call, do we call them G's? Uh, no, as, no we, we do. They're known as the G's. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> how do you say the, the, their names, Rick, for me? Uh, Sumitra Chatterjee, uh -huh. Madhavi Mukherjee, or Mukherjee, and uh, the, then Shaleen Mukherjee. Yes. Uh, and the synopsis for this is a lonely wife of a newspaper editor falls in love with her visiting cousin-in-law who shares her love for literature. That gives away a lot, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. For a film that has very little to tell you, that kind of just gives you all of it in a nutshell right there. Yeah, stupid IMDb. Uh -huh. Yeah, come uh, on. Anyways, obviously it came out in 1964, so it's 100% spoilers. So go watch it and come back if you don't want to be spoiled. That's how we do things. Correct. Uh, you had plenty of time to watch it. In, what, yeah, six, you've had plenty years. of time to watch this film. We've only been introduced to Indian film for, for a year. And, and how long have you been introduced to Indian film, huh? Huh? Yeah, idiots. Getting mad at us for not seeing things yet, huh? Idiots. Anyways, uh, so Rick, initial thoughts. Um, uh, mixed emotions, mostly and only positive in regard to it, because the main thing about it is just cinematically, he just shows once again, in fact, um, his use of black and white mm. um, and his ability to, there's so much to say about him and what he does as a director and a cinematographer and framing shots and pacing and everything else. Uh, he's just one of the greatest directors I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. The um, um, there were there were parts of it where it's. I have a feeling some of the subtleties of what came out of the novel, as well as the cultural representations he was giving us, are probably lost on me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I think what wasn't lost are some of the 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 subtleties relationally between people, but I think. This, this period in, in India and Bengal and Calcutta's history, um, some of the political undertones and overtones that were associated with this, as well as the social undertones, I, I probably would have appreciated some of that a lot more. Um, but I can, go, I can go on and on and on and on and on about him and his directing. Um, and I, I, I found, uh, while... I found her to be cinematically captivating on screen. Um, there were, there were points. I just, I, I kind of, 
this is this is being nitpicky, but I guess I kind of um, wasn't capturing what I've I've heard some people say about the film of uh, the, the the sizzling undertones and tensions. I could sense they were there, but they weren't as believable for me. I felt a lot of it was almost statuesque versus flesh and blood at times. That's my only only real critique is in that sense of the actual. Uh, inhabiting of the characters, particularly for um, uh, uh, Madabi Mukherjee mm -hmm. playing Charlotta. Um, oh, you froze. Oh, did I? Am I frozen? You're gone. And oh, now you're back. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I didn't freeze on my end, so that was weird. Okay, uh, good, 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 good. Anyways, uh, yeah, so uh, let's start with Sausajit Rai. Um, yeah, he there's a lot of shots in this where I was just like, it was just so beautiful how he used, and it was just black and white, which is insane. So I think it was what we said in the pool as well. Um, some of the shots were just so beautiful and some of the innovation he did in 1964 in terms of some shots is just brilliant. Uh, brilliant. One of, my, one of my favorite being uh, the swing uh, shot. Uh, yes. Where yes. He, he was following her back and forth, and then he did the pan over to him, and it was back and forth with him. But it was, uh, I don't know what he contraption he used uh, for it at that time. Uh, yeah. There, there wasn't a ton back in the day for because their cameras were massive. <laughs> yeah, they were, and and he his his um his choice to do it in black and white was definitively a choice because in 1964 color was booming so mm -hmm. you know films were being done in color he clearly was an artist who's like uh, uh my you know, my palette i'm doing black and white my friends mm -hmm. i mean that was my first my first note in one of the first frames of film was this is a man who knows black and white and he's different um i would actually say he's more um aware of and uses black and white more like orson wells and frank capra than even hitchcock hitchcock was brilliant with black and white but he was pretty straightforward with it and i i think i think um this is a great comparison i think satyajit rai uses black and white the way um sanjay lila bansali uses light and color mm. in his films yeah that 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 awareness of the aesthetic and the medium in which you're working. Like there was one shot toward the end. It's just, it's his choice of shot where he's at the foot of the bed that has this wood railing at the bottom that you can see through. And she comes walking into frame. And as she does, he takes a, I, I don't think they had it on a dolly. I think it was walked. And he just goes from the one point to the, to the other, which as you know, now you just digitize that movement. Yeah. You just program where you want the camera to go and it's on the dolly and the cameraman sits there and it just goes from point one to point two that you've set up for the shot and it's smooth and goes shh. Uh, it, it, it. And yeah, that swing shot, especially on her, I mean, it went over to him as she was swinging by, but the shot, I was like, are they sitting on her lap? Is she holding the camera no, right I, now? I didn't know what Did they, they hang it over the top? Hang it and, um, attach, and attach it maybe? Yeah, or I don't maybe, know. Maybe I, maybe she was on like uh, an actual swing, but they in, in front of like the regular things, they put the swing rope in front of it to make yeah, it look like yeah, it yeah, was, yeah. and kind yeah. of a camera trick almost. I don't know. But yeah, I, I, and and he, one of my he, I wrote this, I wrote this down too that he's he's the anti Quentin Tar Tarantino, and <laughs> that uh, Quentin, as you know, is the quintessential. Uh, dialogue man i mean yeah. everything is dialogue driven with with quentin and uh rye just is very selective purposefully what he uh, yeah. allows to be spoken because i don't think there was one word in the first 10 minutes of the in, of the film it was 10 he minutes says, before somebody spoke he says much 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 more with his visuals than he does with his scripts i read a um uh article about it after and some uh, person said in the interview, you guys can tell us this is true, that he, in an interview, he said this is his favorite of his works. Uh, he mm -hmm. says he would change almost nothing about this film, and he would change a lot about all, a lot of his other stuff. He said this mm -hmm. is one I would change the least amount uh, if I had to redo it again. I would uh, say, um, yeah, it's by far his most 
polished in terms of recognizing this is a man at this point in his life he knew exactly what he was doing uh, i i didn't feel there was any where in opu and even in the um two the short film uh there was that and it's wonderful that sense of experimentation going on um but i that's what makes them so endearingly wonderful is that even his experimentation is uh without him even realizing it he's brilliant like that shot in the opu trilogy when he's he's got the the dragonfly on the branch that lands you know what i mean it's like, yeah uh yeah. but yeah my my oh, and and he can um one of my favorite things that seems to be a thumbprint on everything we've seen is it's not just that he doesn't need the dialogue or even want the dialogue, but he's very happy letting you feel something and just letting things sit for very, very, very long periods of time. Yeah. And just let you he, sit in that. He has no problem with it. Yeah. No, he wants you to just be there. And I, I love the little, the nuances of how just a glance means something or a touch of a hand means something or, uh, um, and again, like as, as I, I felt that every moment that, um, uh, Madabi Mukherjee was on screen, she like so far, all of the, the female leads he's had, they are just so the camera loves them. They're, mm. they're, they're so such beautiful women to look at and so expressive in their eyes um but but the one thing for me that was missing was it um and again it may be just lost on me was i i wanted a little bit more humanness i felt there was the one who had the most humanness to me was that was the the husband i i had my most and it may be because i was most empathetic towards him because i felt like he was the victim in all of this um the husband but that's yes the, yeah the, the the husband of the, the 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 owner of the writing the thing the correct yeah the, the bubati dota played by shalene mccurgy i don't know if he was the victim, yeah who, but whatever well he he's the one who has the guy steal from him and well, then he, discovers that his wife is emotionally attached to his cousin in law because, because of neglect from him though was it neglect yes it was it was <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was neglect from him it even says yeah. it in the synopsis. <laughs> yeah, I that that for me, he came across as someone who. That's funny. I guess he was, it was the, he was the one I was least attached to. <laughs> yeah, he he for me, he didn't come across. Obviously, he was someone who was taking her for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, but I felt like she too. I didn't see any, and it could be the point in the relationship. I didn't see anything in regard to an attempt on either one of their parts to try and connect with one another. Um, I felt like she was just bored with being married to a successful guy and bored being wealthy and bored that she didn't have anything to talk to about with her husband. And then well, I think, found I think she was upset that her husband wasn't noticing her at all. I think that's what it was <laughs> like. Uh, I, and it's been a, it was a while because they which, we talked about it at the beginning where uh, she she said um, or he he or she said that, um, are you um, lonely and she says i'm used to it and so it's, it was it had been a while uh well that's loneliness that's not neglect that's he's even said in the thing that her rival is the paper so that gets all of his attention she gets none of it and so that's going to cause some neglect yeah where, where i'm sorry which um where what's what's synopsis the uh Oh, never mind. I guess I read it into the synopsis. It's not in the synopsis, but um, I thought I, I thought I read it. Could the uh, who shares a love? I thought I read that it was because of the father, the the husband's neglect. But that's uh, that's what I think it is. Um, not that I'm saying she's right in it, but that's why she that's why she was she found somebody who actually paid attention to her and showed her uh, showed interest in her interests um, as opposed to just thinking about himself. And so, yeah, that's uh, that's why she found um, him. But then, obviously, I thought Anal, uh, Anal, Am Amal, Amal. How do you say his name? Uh, yeah, or Amal. Yeah, I yeah, don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, I thought his character was actually really, really interesting. 
um, because you didn't know yeah, what, I they, did too. what they were going to do. Were they going to run off together? Were they going to start a relationship? Was he also going to betray his cousin like the other guy did? Um, but then he felt really, really bad because he saw what was going on. And then he, yes. he, he left. And then the husband realized after he saw her crying um, really emotionally in the, uh, in the bedroom that he was like, oh, mm-hmm. I should probably pay attention to my wife. Uh, <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, I didn't capture that as much as I felt. Um, I felt, I felt it was a bit more complex than that. I didn't think it was as simplistic as he's just an uncaring husband who wasn't paying attention to his well, wife I, and got his comeuppance by reason of the fact that she I just, didn't, you didn't know, what is she supposed to do? Care about her? I think he just d- didn't pay attention to her and wasn't putting her as a priority. He put his paper as a priority, not not his wife. And so she felt neglected and, and she wanted to feel loved and that somebody was interested in her. And so that's yeah one of one of my one of my favorite things about it was the way it portrays and this is a very real thing that i think is lost in a lot of society today is that intimacy between two people happens way before anything happens physically if you're talking about true intimacy because having having sexual connection to somebody is not intimacy in and of itself Mm -hmm. um that doesn't mean you've been intimate there's people who go out and have one night stands with people you were never intimate with that person Mm -hmm. um you just went out and turned them into a sex object um the the real intimacy and the kind of intimacy that's dangerous to other relationships where if someone's married and they find themselves becoming emotionally intertwined with somebody uh it's in conversation and that that to me was the point of real disconnect because uh he the the husband was absolutely interested in conversation um i felt that she was not interested in conversation with him i they just didn't have a lot in common i don't i don't know that either one of them really were seeking to try to i agree with that but okay that's fine (laughs) we don't have have the heartburn on that too much no, 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 no. I, I, that's just that's just the character development thing, either within the story or the script. Where I didn't, I didn't think she either was trying to be conversant with him. And granted, maybe because she'd been ignored for a lot of years, and so she was unhappy because she finally reached a point of like not giving him the story. Like, why would I give you the story if I don't think you're going to really care or pay attention? So I'm not negating the fact that there was neglect. I just it's those. I wish I had felt more of that humanness in these things we're talking about. Neglect, loneliness, being ignored, um, uh, it, in, in, in Rai's capacity to tell us that as a director, I thought it was superlative. But as it came to the actors giving us an embodiment of an actual human being, it felt statuesque. Mm. Sometimes. Sometimes. I don't know if I agree with that, but that's fine. Um, yeah. the uh, I think actually in the beginning when... He, he, he shows that he's not really interested in conversation except for his own when his cousin was telling him, started to tell him the story, and he just told him the title, and then he just went on his right. He's like, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, uh, you need to get married. He didn't even listen to his story. He's not interested in anything mm-hmm. except for what he has to say. That's what I got out of it. Uh, mm-hmm. And until the end, and then he realizes it, and, and hopefully he, he became a better person and a better husband. Uh, for it and started focusing on on his wife instead of just his paper and so that's what i got out of it um but uh the uh i thought my favorite character was probably a now i thought he did the best um of of them all but i guess we've seen him before right he was the uh, poo in a poo that's right? opoo yeah that's opoo yeah that's yeah. opoo yeah I thought- and we've also seen him in uh I, I, if i'm not mistaken the very first time we actually saw him it was a um, short film right sumitra yeah sumitra chatterjee was in that short film where the the, the guys disappear and become dolls it's sujo josh that's his that's his short film yeah yes yeah that's his uh so yeah i i think he's a really good actor he was he was probably my favorite actor in this um and i thought it was really interesting 90 percent of the film took f- place in just the house that's just the house it didn't it really be a go play. anywhere uh yeah which was, which was crazy uh, so I thought that was really interesting. And I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I, I still, I probably would prefer to watch Opu, even though I hated Opu, uh, in terms of him himself. Yeah, I, uh, I much, I much prefer the Opu trilogy. But I, I thought it was actually really enjoyable, and I actually looked the score as well, and the fact that he did the score, and I thought it sounded a little familiar at times. Well, whatever it is, the piccolo or the flute that he uses, the mm-hmm. whatever, I can't recreate it yeah but uh, i I really i really like that sound like a lot i do too it's 
it's definitively now stapled. There's a feeling, even though like he did this versus before it was Ravi Shankar with the Opu trilogy, uh-huh. there was still uh, there was still that it almost felt like his. You know, it has a feeling. His yeah. that's the, one of the first things I was um, uh, I, I would watch this with Indrani. I had my phone and she was watching it with me, um, and I said, I can't think of another director who who puts you in their films and. You can see a film and go, oh, that looks like a Tarantino film. That looks like a Sanjay Lila Bansali film. That looks like a fill in the blank. There's not a lot of movies where there's not much going on on screen and you feel like you're in their film. And I feel that way with Satyajit Rai. I can feel myself in his films. He's a really talented director, man. He's a very, very good <laughs> Under, director. Understatement. Well, happy birthday to you, sir. Uh, you you are a genius and apparently also in scoring as well. So you're multi-talented. Yeah. Amazing, uh, amazing, amazing filmmaker. Let us know what you thought of it down in the comments below. Let us know what other uh, Bengali and or Satyajit Rai films that we should watch next, please. Because, uh, uh, you know, we explore everything. We want to so, see them all. Yeah. Let us know down below. Our stupid reactions. Tune in for the